Hejsan, hejsan. Det var Peter i Göteborg. Hallå igen. This was Peter in Gothenburg. And I'd like to just do another video log reporting about my hip resurfacing operation. I was requested to do a follow-up video now, long term, uh, in English. I did one in Swedish a couple of weeks ago and um, it's now gone a year and uh, nine months since the operation. So uh, I thought I'd just tell you a little bit of my situation today and a little bit of background. Um, things are going really well. Well, in fact, the reason I've not been making videos is because there's not that much to tell. It works perfectly. Um, I have just as much range of motion now in both of my hips, the old one and the new one. So really, I don't really think about having a hip at all. It's the other parts of my body that are, you need more attention, like my knees and ankles. So the hips works perfectly. Um, I'm very active, uh, a lot more active than I was two years ago before the operation. And I can do basically anything I want to, so I do. I do like CrossFit training, gym training. I do play squash and cycle, uh, go for long walks. The only thing I don't do is jogging because I think that I don't like jogging and I think it might wear the body out, not just the hip, but other parts of the body as well. So I concentrate on, uh, on uh, chasing a ball or doing the sh short interval training. So things have gone really well and um, I was just thinking about two years ago why I started making this video series was because of the fact that this type of operation, hip resurfacing, is not available in Sweden. My idea was to try and uh, spread the knowledge and uh, try and make people, help people make a, a choice if they want, if hip resurfacing is something they could choose, especially for younger people. Um, it might seem quite odd. It was available in Sweden between 2000 and 2010 and around 3000 operations were done here, but it was stopped because of uh, poor results, uh, mainly because they were using the, the ASR prosthesis, which you may have read about uh, from the manufacturer Dupai. And they had like a, they had like a 13% failure rate after five years and problems with with uh, metal particles in the body. And there's been uh, a lot written about that and lawsuits in the United States and in Australia. Uh, but that was off, taken off the market 2010 and the method's not been taken up here in Sweden again, which is uh, a shame, but maybe we're now we're getting more publicity and hopefully the, some specialists will take up the method again because there's no doubt that it, uh, it works really well. And uh, for younger people, it's uh, really a, a godsend because all being well, this should this prosthesis should last a lifetime, and and that was probably the main factor why I made the decision two years ago to to go for this method. Um, I was in a lot of pain. Um, my range of movement was really bad, so I went to see an orthopedic doctor with some X-rays, and he said, "You're 50 years old. You should wait 10 years on painkillers and then have a." hip replacement. Uh, that wasn't really an attractive bid for, for me. I wanted to be active. I didn't want to go on painkillers at all. So I said, now I'm going to have the operation and I've been reading about hip resurfacing. What do you think about it? Uh, he started banging the table with his fist and said, we don't do that here in Sweden. It doesn't work. So I decided then and then this guy's not coming near me with a knife and I walked out, uh, which is a shame because you would think that someone, educated person would be informed about the latest uh, improvements and uh, techniques. But luckily there's a guy in Sweden who had a, a website, he'd done the operation, had the operation himself 12 years earlier and I got in contact with him and we sent my x-rays down to a clinic in Germany and to a clinic in Belgium and they assessed them and said I was a good candidate and two months later I was lying on my back on the operation table having a new hip and it's probably the best decision I ever made uh, concerning my, my health. Um, everything went really well and <clears throat> 
it's good, like I said, to be able to inform people, other people in Sweden. Uh, during this period, there's been a lot of people ringing me and uh, asking me for advice. And because we're in the EU, the fantastic EU, then you, sh you are able to, uh, to go to specialist clinics in the EU and get help if, if there's not help locally. So you should uh, obviously take advantage of that as possible. Um, so in Sweden now we have a, a bit of an upswing. There's a celebrity who's been on his Facebook site. I also operate had an operation now in um, six months ago, I think it was. No, it was late 2018. And uh, he's been on his Facebook site and, the method, and talking about this method as well. He was down in Belgium at the Ankle Clinic where I was and had his hip resurfaced and he's uh, very happy as well. So we'll see how things develop. We've also had uh, Andy Murray, the tennis player. He, uh, he had his hip resurfaced in a clinic in, uh, in London in January. Um, and he was already back playing tennis, professional tennis in May. He won uh, Queen's playing doubles in May and he was in, uh, participated in uh, Wimbledon as well in the doubles, mixed doubles and the men's doubles. But uh, so that's fantastic. I thought five months must be a world record, but he's 32 years old and obviously a professional athlete. So he has a really good condition to succeed, but uh, he seems to be very happy. So there's no doubt that the method uh, with hip resurfacing works. Um, it's not easy to find specialist clinics. There are quite a few, but you have to do your research and you have to find them. The guy who I chose, Dr. Desmet, at the Ankle Clinic in Ghent in Belgium. He's done over 4,000 hip resurfacing and you can see the best results are with the surgeons who are specialists and have their team and have done a lot of operations. That's when you get the best results. It's as simple as that. So it's worth doing the research. There are clinics in England, uh, in the UK, in Germany. Belgium and in America and Canada and Australia so even in India as well so uh, you have to you have to uh, do a bit of homework and be a bit active I can tell you about about the time when I was in Belgium we uh, we arrived on a Tuesday and uh, the operation scheduled for Wednesday so Wednesday evening everything was complete um, the clinic is a specialist hip clinic, so I think he, I think they did around ten operations in the same day. So it's very organised and very, very uh, professional. Uh, we was in the hospital. We were a, a group of six from Sweden who travelled down and um, had the operation on the same day. And we were in our beds Thursday, Thursday evening. We were up walking around on crutches. And then we checked out of the, of the hospital on Friday morning and we stayed together in a local hotel because you're not allowed to fly after an operation. So we were, we were in Belgium for another week. So, and in the hotel we got help with our, uh, uh, by visiting by a nurse and uh, we did a bit of simple physiotherapy as well to get everything moving. Very, very uh, simple stuff in the beginning. But after a week, I was very mobile. I was walking around with just uh, one crutch. Uh, for me, everything went um, better than expected, really. I would, uh, it went it was quite an easy process. I'm not saying that's the same for everybody. Um, but uh, for, me, for me, it went uh, surprisingly easy. So we were there a week and we flew home the following Friday. And on Monday, again, I was back at work on Monday. So I was off work for nine days totally. Uh, I've not got a physically demanding job. I'm a, I work with sales, so I've had to drive the car and uh, most of the time in front of the computer. But uh, I had no problems at all, no pain, and I could carry on with my work. On Tuesday, I had a business trip down to Germany. As I was flying and, uh, yeah, things went well. And then we just started doing more and more rehab, doing rehab every day, little, and then just increasing over during the following weeks. But basically the first six weeks you take it really, really easy and then try to increase, uh, no, slowly, but just progressively. The main thing is to just keep active and not sit still for long. 
But uh, during the first period, it's enough by just being active around the house and going up and down stairs and, and just keep moving, going for short walks uh, and then doing the rehab you know, half an hour a day or whatever. Uh, that's full. That's, that's perfectly good in the beginning and then just build up. I made some other videos where I show what I was doing training wise. Uh, like I said, after six months, I was basically, I was doing everything. So uh, here's a picture of the uh, prosthesis. This is the uh, um, BHR prosthesis, the Birmingham hip resurfacing developed by Dr. McMinn in the 90s. Um, it's similar to the one I had, one called a Conserve Plus, which is very similar. Um, this bit is cemented into the, on the top of the, the femur, the top of your thigh bone, and it's got like, uh, it's set in place with like quick drying cement. So after 10 minutes, it's in place. So that doesn't move after 10 minutes. The cup sits in the pelvis, it's pressed in, and uh, it's got like a textured surface. So that grows into your, goes into your bone uh, during the period of time. Like I say, now after 18 months, I'm not sure what the situation is, but it just does, I don't get any feeling from the, from the prosthesis. So I, I think everything's gone well there. Um, and this, if it's put in at the right angle, that is the critical thing. Because if the cup is in slightly wrong angle, you can get a problem with what's called edge wear, where you're on the extremities of your motion, you can get wear. So the most important thing is to have an experienced surgeon who puts the cup and, and the, uh, the cap on your femur, uh, the acetabula, in the right place. And if they're in line and in the right angle, then you have the best results. Um, there you can see it in place. Um, like I say, in this case, it's in a really good position. And uh, if you do that, then the, the outcomes look to be very, very good. As I mentioned, things went fairly easy for me. Uh, after the operation, um, I think one of the reasons for that was I was pretty, I was in pretty good shape before travelling down to the clinic. Uh, a couple of months before my operation, I visited a physiotherapist local in Sweden, and we went through a kind of rehab routine. I suppose you call it prehab, which were the normal exercises you do when you have a hip replacement and I started with that program before two months before the operation so I was doing like 20 minutes every day and that made it a lot easier to carry on with after the operation so I would re recommend doing that if, uh, if you're thinking about an operation um, that helped me a lot because I was already in the routine so I could just follow that every day after the operation and uh, it wasn't wasn't difficult um, like I said, the main reason for choosing this method is probably because hopefully it will last for a lifetime and we won't have to go in again and do any repairs. And also the range of motion I have now is quite fantastic. So they were the two main reasons. Um, I can recommend highly trying looking into hip resurfacing and see if it's, see, see if it's something that could suit yourself. Um, you have to do a bit of research, like I said. The best results seem quite clearly to be with those clinics where that are specialised and have done a high volume of operations. Um, if you look at the McMinn Clinic in Birmingham in the UK, where they've done four or five thousand operations, the results are fantastic. But that's because it's the same surgeon and the same team doing each operation and then you get really good results. So do your research and find a clinic uh, that you believe in. Um, there are, be a bit, like I said, you have to be a bit proactive. Uh, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below and I'll try to answer them. Um, good luck if you're considering a new hip and uh, hope the video has been helpful. Take care. Bye for now.